and Dr. Loretta Foote knew Dr. Walker. So they went down to tell him how great juice therapy was. He said, well, I've been doing it myself. And he says, the way you tell it to me, I better do something about a juicer. He made the first commercial juicer called Norwalk. This was the first commercial juicer. And he made it. And as years went by, of course, he doesn't have it anymore, and I don't know what they're doing with it, whether it's still the quality that it used to be. But her life was saved with carrot juice. She was a young woman when this had happened in the first place. And when she came to visit me in Evanston, Wyoming, her chauffeur had brought her up to, um, to me twice a week. And uh, she took her treatments. And one day she felt talkative. And she said, Dr. Christopher, have you got a few minutes? And I said, well, yes, uh, m my other helpers can take care of the patients here. And so I sat down and she told me the story. And she had written a little book on being cured by cancer. And I have it in my library. If I can ever find it with my pitchfork and shovel when I go through the rest of my stuff. And it was quite an exciting story to me. I liked it, and I'm glad she told it to me when she did, because a short time after she was dead. But she had lived to be up to a ripe old age, and she did it on carrot juice. So please, don't back down when people said, uh, would you rather have a glass of beer or carrot juice? Take the carrot juice. <laughs> You'll find it'll pay off. As far as keeping the plumbing system of the human body open, you got all the answers here. In our formulas, we will tell you that a human body can be rebuilt, and these will prove it. Our next set of herbs that we wish to talk on will be the Amenagogu herbs. The Amenagogu herbs, these particular herbs, Amenagogu is a classification of herbs for the organs of the human body for reproduction. And uh, here we're going to talk on not just herbs for women, but we're going to talk on herbs for men also. because. Wherever there are reproductive organs, unless they're taken care of, we have problems. Squavine and tansy, pennyroyal, blessed thistle, false unicorn, cramp bark, etc., etc., etc. These are all precious herbs. But let me tell you quickly a thing or two about some of these herbs. Uh, let's, let's start with uh, blessed thistle. Blessed thistle, if you've never seen it, you'll uh, miss seeing a beautiful plant. But from the end of each leaf is a needle. And after you've gathered holy or blessed thistle, you know about it. They will prick you well. I was talking to a group of people one time, and a man raised his hand and he said, where did they ever get that name, Blessed Thistle? Holy thistle. I'm a farmer for 40 years. I've called it many things besides holy and blessed. <laughs> he, knew, he knew about the spines in it. But there is a, an herb that is, by old herbalist, the statement is made, that herb should be in every home where there is a woman or a woman to be. And they taught that at just prior puberty, that the girl should have a cup of <coughs> blessed thistle tea each day. And why? Because it is loaded with hormones and estrogens. It is well equipped to uh, cleanse the reproductive organs. This is such a versatile herb. It's used a lot in our reproductive 
uh, remedies. Blessed thistle. This is an herb that if you don't have milk and you're nursing a baby and you've lost your milk, start back, start drinking blessed thistle tea and you'll have a good supply again. The interesting thing is that it, it does amazing things with many people, not just those who have lost their milk, but women who have never been married, who want to adopt a baby and want to nurse that baby. They drink holy thistle tea. Yes, we had an interesting case I have to tell you about. We've had so many, well, uh, let me tell you about a young lady about 18 years old who had never been married, never conceived, never been with a man. But her sister, older than her, was killed in an automobile accident. The baby was thrown clear, a newborn baby that uh, wasn't very old. The baby was not injured. But that baby would not tolerate any formulas. All it wanted was mother's milk. And this young lady came and said to me, I hate to see my little relative, I don't know whether it was a niece or a nephew, die from starvation, but that's what's happening. Can you help me? And I said yes, and we started her on Blessed Thistle Tea. And in a couple of days, she took that baby to her breast and nursed it and reared that baby, reared it, up to the time of, of uh, weaning. We had a very interesting case where a, a woman came into my office in Orem, Utah. And I'll never forget this woman. It's, uh, I meet so many, many thousands of people, but this particular woman looked like aristocracy. She, she looked like she had she was a queen out of England or out of Sweden. She looked more Swedish than anything. She had golden wavy hair. And she said, I would like to adopt a baby, but I want to nurse it. Can it happen? I said, yes. So we told her to go into the eating of uh, the mucus's diet and uh, to start drinking Blessed Thistle Tea. She said, I will adopt the baby in a couple of three weeks. And she said, when I have the baby, I'll uh, come and see you and show you the baby. I didn't think I'd ever see her again. And so she left. But uh, one wintry morning, a very expensive car stopped out in front of my office. And the woman that got out was in a long purple robe with white her mind around it, and she looked very queenly, that long yellow hair. And she came into my office and said, Doctor, I told you I would bring the baby. And she threw back her robe, and nursing at her breast was a little Indian papoose, a Navajo baby. And against her uh, uh, white uh, Nordic skin, they, they, it looked like such a switch, I mean. Well, she made a statement to me that was one I had read from one of the last books of the Bible wherein uh, Joseph, was it Joseph's daughter, said, this child is blood of my blood. And I'd never heard that statement until this lady said, I've had three other Navajo babies, but they have all been uh, fed formulas. But I felt so strongly that I wanted to nurse this one. And she said, since I have nursed it, it feels like it's part of me. It is blood of my blood. All right. Well, the actual truth was that she was giving it the blood from... Uh, a, uh, a Nordic individual. And that uh, blood in the form of the milk was 
something that was going to change that baby's life. Uh, with my first baby, I nursed, but I'd always make sure that I had rest and lots of good diet and B vitamins and really had to concentrate on having a lot of milk. And I had the twins. As long as I had blessed thistle, I just nursed them to 18 months with no problem. Excellent. Blessed thistle is precious. I mean, it is one of the greats. Um, what happened to the menstrual cycle of these two women? Do you know when, they, when their milk started to flow? They, I don't know. This has been years ago. We've had many cases of it, and this is something I've never asked, to be perfectly honest with you. Do you think it could be possible for a man to uh, nurse a child? There's history of it. Oh, yes, there are tribes where the woman bears the child and the man nurses it. Yes, I, I have read of this. There, there are... <laughs> there, there are <laughs> equal rights, I like that. There are men today that can nurse babies. But, you know, I, I think it's quite interesting when we stop to think about it. A woman goes through all the suffering and the pain and miscomfort of bearing babies. I worked with a scientist, Nathan W. Davis. And uh, as we worked along together, I could always tell when Mrs. Davis was going to have a baby because Nathan W. would come to work and he was green around the gills and he'd throw up and he would he'd be in the restroom heaving. And I'd say, what's the matter, Bill? Your wife having a baby? <laughs> yep. And she never got sick. Just an idea, huh? <laughs> but it worked with her, I'll tell you. All right, this, this of Amanagogu herbs, you'll find this herb in our formulas for um, hormonal estrogen, for many things. Many of these herbs, we can spend a lot of time on them. But let's go into false unicorn. Yes. There is a tribe in Colombia where the men actually get the pains. The women tend to them. Then the woman has the baby and then she puts it in the man and he's the one who rests. But he suffers the pains, actually. She where is this? In South America. In South America. All right, maybe this is what I read about. Did he nurse the babies? No, he doesn't nurse the baby. But he, but he takes care of them. He takes care of them. Well, huh. Think about it, gentlemen and ladies. <laughs> Never a dull moment. False unicorn. There is an herb that has many facets. It is an herb that if an individual would like to have a baby, it will help them. This particular herb, false unicorn, is one that uh, we have seen many, many children born because of it, where they wouldn't have been prior to this. In Olympia, Washington, a man and his wife came to me. They had been married for between 14 and 15 years. And uh, she had no baby. And she had been hungry for a baby. And now he was afraid she was losing her mind because at night she would have had to hold a pillow in her arms, hugging it, thinking it was her child. And he asked if there was any way because medical aids had not helped in any way they had ever tried. Though his sperm count Though it was a little weak, was there, and she was perfectly normal. So I told him the process to use, of course, our basics, and uh, the gallon of steam distilled water day, all of these to keep the bowels clean and so forth, and to live on a mucus's diet. But the woman and the man were each to take a teaspoonful of of false unicorn 
morning and night, preferably three teaspoons a day. It can be taken in tea or in capsule, and they were to use one tablespoon three times a day or more of wheat germ oil. When I got through with the interview, I guaranteed this couple that they would either have their child in one year or would have conceived within the year. Nearly 15 years and uh, give a promise like this. 14 months later, my wife Della and I received an invitation to go to the christening, a little boy. They named him John Raymond. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty nice of them. But uh, all I had to do was recommend the formulas. I had nothing else to do with it. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but we, we have seen this enough times. In fact, I have a grandnephew that uh, his mother had never been able to conceive until they tried this formula that I have just given. But today we can't say a year from today you'll either have the baby or will con have conceived because we have used so many mm, horrible things in our diet. We have used so many mm, bits of merchandise that aren't fit for man or beast, to say the least. Much processed food and no life. And so we can't say it. We can say, if you <laughs> straighten yourselves up, a baby can come. A number of women uh, that come to our herb shop have been getting pregnant on FC. It only takes a couple months. On the female corrective. There are some great herbs in the female corrective, and what it actually does is rebuild the reproductive organs. But whenever they take female corrective, they should also take hormone and estrogen along because when the female corrective is not, when, when it's needed, it means that those organs are not functioning properly and they're not putting out the hormones and estrogens. And that's why we put the two of them together. This is why we can guarantee any woman, which we have done for now 40 years, if they have severe menstrual pains, if they don't know that they're coming on a 28-day cycle. It might be three days or four months, and they're worried about these things. We can guarantee that within 90 to 120 days on the female corrective and the hormone estrogen herbs being taken, these two different formulas, that within that period of time, they will have a 28-day cycle and no pain. That is a promise that has been backed up, and it was given in the Healthy Newsletter, and uh, many thousands of women have tried it. So we can speak authoritatively on this subject. But the false unicorn does something else. We mentioned the fact that with lobelia and false unicorn in an aborting condition, all right, so it'll save the baby from being aborted if it is used properly. The different herbs that are mentioned here are just part of the Amenagogu herbs. The Indian woman used to be carrying the baby and as they were en route to another area where they were going to live, she would stop the crowd, leave them, and go back of a bush, have her baby, and catch up with them. We can't do that so well today because of what we are trying to live on. We can't do it because we are not in as good a condition physically but we'll come back to it. We'll come back. 
Do you have questions on? Yes. I've been told and I've read that women who go on the mucus diet, a clean diet, uh, their menstrual cycles tend to become the actual amount of time that they bleed gets shorter and shorter. There's less discharge until it should ideally be maybe two or three hours of spotting and that's it. Can you comment on that? Yes, I can. We have had cases over our years wherein they didn't have two or three hours of spotting. They had no bleeding whatsoever. The only reason there is bleeding is because we have an unclean bloodstream. And the vegetarian or fruitarian who are very careful will find that they have shorter and shorter menstrual periods. I did it myself on two months of uh, just fruits. On two months of fruit. All right, here's a good verification. Yes. I've done it too. That's why I'm asking. I thought there was something wrong with me. <laughs> no, praise the Lord. There's nothing wrong with you at all. It is what was intended in the first place. And if we lived the law, we would not be bothered with these conditions because this is merely to clean the body. This is for reproductive reasons only. And I'm glad to hear that we've got some people right here because this has been very common to me over my years of practice. But many people can't quite conceive it. But we have two witnesses here today, and we appreciate those witnesses because we know that the better the human being is, the closer we are to being clean, the better off we are in raising our vibration. And when that vibration gets high enough, we can get into some very wonderful things. We can tune in. Are you saying that men could be put on some of these estrogen herbs? That is an excellent question, and I'm glad you brought it up, because, well, let me go right back to men and our problems. When I first started practice many years ago, I never anticipated seeing a man in for prostatitis or prostate problems of any kind before he was 45, 50 years old. I started practicing in the Army. And I was astounded because of the late teens and early 20s that flocked into me with prostate problems because of poor diet, because of improper living. And then, of course, the only ways we could take care of a prostate condition legally was a prostate massage in the office or if they were too severe, we'd send them over to Matica General and they would get a prostate operation, have the prostate removed, prostatitis. This was something that very few wanted to uh, be cut. So we had so many come to us for help. There were so many of these young fellows that now had prostate problems. They changed my title. They called me the Rear Admiral. <laughs> it wasn't the most pleasant job in the world, I promise you. And I have done eight and 10 in a day of prostate massages. And that is a day's work in anybody's language. But now with the herbs we have, it takes care of it automatically. Since I went into private practice, I've had boys 14 and 15 years old brought to me with prostate problems. And it's getting younger and younger. And the reason is we are on the skids. I'm going to keep repeating that. We are going downhill very rapidly. And it's a sad thing. The hormone estrogen formula is needed so badly in not only men but women in both sides because of malnutrition. When we ate whole grains years ago, when we did not process our foods, there was adequate hormone and estrogen to take care of the young people. But as I have mentioned before, we say, how could such a brat be spawned by such wonderful people as we are? A teenager today is hard to conceive in many cases. And why? Because they are minus 
their hormones and estrogens. They are starving to death. It's malnutrition because they have been eating processed foods. And whose fault is it? Our fault. We gave it to them. We didn't feed them properly. We have seen cases in families where those who had been eating as the neighbors ate were on the obnoxious side. And we have seen the parents change the program. And the later children followed the program and using the hormone estrogen formula as well as the whole grains and things, different types of people from the same father and mother. As a boy goes into a puberty, the same as a girl. The girl will find that if she uses a hormone estrogen, if she does not have adequate of proper foods, and she uses a hormone estrogen, that she will have easier menstrual periods than she'd ever dreamed possible. She will have a 28 day cycle. And the boy will have less trouble with reproductive organs. This is an interesting thing that he will have an easier life and he'll have a better seed by far. These things are extremely important. But as we go on through life, when the girl gets into a puberty and she has ample hormones and estrogens, she will find that she will have easier menstrual periods than her friends that she goes to school with that don't have it. We need it another time. The mother has expected a baby and been looking forward to it, wondering what to call it and everything else. These are rare cases, thank goodness, but there's enough of them to worry us. She has her baby. And what does she do? She wants to commit suicide. She wants to kill the baby and commit suicide. And here she was looking forward to it, happy. It's a hormone estrogen deficiency. She's starved. It's malnutrition. Her nerves have shot. They're gone. We need the hormone estrogen formula another time, at the time of menopause. A woman who has lived through life eating properly will sneak into menopause without anybody knowing it, not even herself. Do you think this would help uh, <coughs> a mother or parents <coughs> We have much child abuse today, and much of that child abuse is from hormone estrogen deficiency. If those parents could be fed properly, they would find that they would be kinder, easier people to live with. You know, as we talk along, there's a lot of things to talk about, aren't there? A child with homosexual problems is something I don't know that much about. I have seen a lot of it. I have seen a lot. But we generally find that it is a hormone estrogen misbalance. It's, it's sad. A recent research study was just, um, has just come out and they have found that the mother's diet during pregnancy, being deficient had a great deal to do with imbalance here. I can believe it. Yes. Do you think uh, it's good for suicidal tendencies in general for uh, anyone? I definitely do. I definitely do because man, woman, or child that's deficient is going to have trouble. And uh, menstrual deficiency Hormone estrogen lacking is one of the saddest things that we have got. This is what caused Sodom and Gomorrah. There's no if and an about it because they became high evolved in their eating practices. So it would contribute to most of the juvenile delinquency as well. 
Yes, we have seen this in our own practice, that children who were reared properly and given the hormone estrogen, given plenty of good food, were a different type of an individual entirely than the snackers. Far different. Yes. I uh, read a report, or listened, heard a report recently on the radio about juvenile delinquents uh, drink about four times as much milk as any amount. Um, but also, I heard another talk by, I, I think it was Dr. Ellis, where he had related uh, a hormone imbalance with heavy milk drinking because of the uh, cycle of the cow at certain points kind of hormones, it throws, uh, especially women, off balance, hormonal balance. That was Dr. Ellis, all right. Yeah. Yes, uh -huh. I still say we haven't scratched the surface. We've got a long ways to go, but we're on the road. We're on the path going up there. Let's keep at it. Are there any more questions here? Let's take just a minute, please on this milk cycle. This is part of the interesting thing because anyone in this room has had at one time or another some milk, whether they were nursed or given to in a formula. They've had it. 